but when you get to a land border, you basically get your transport to within about 150 metres of the start of the border. And then you have to invariably have to pay somebody. In this instance, I think we're getting ripped off per bag. It's costing us around about $6.50 Australian per bag to carry it for probably 200 metres into the next country. Um, because they're charging us per bag, we're carrying most of it and um, we're paying for the three bags. So, welcome to Uzbekistan. Now, getting across the border was uh, always fun. Uh, so, from Kazakhstan to Uzbekistan, same sort of experiences we had from Kyrgyzstan into Kazakhstan. Um, as soon as we finally got through, after showing our passport to about 19 different people, um, we had cab drivers on us like a seagull on a chip. And, um, yeah, those, and those guys that lurk around there are, um, yeah, rip-offs. The, the amount of money he wanted was about, equivalent about $30 Australian, um, and that's what you pay for a night's accommodation. Right? And we rang a cab, and they said, oh, well, I'm not allowed to pick you up from up there. It's only about, about a quarter of the price, but he said, I can't pick you up from up there. You'll have to come out of there before you get on the cab. So anyway, what we've done is we've jumped on a bus, and come into the, into the city and now we're going to uh, get our some new phone cards um, because it's a different country no service doesn't go over and then um, we're going to catch a cab to our accommodation so two weeks in the, the uh, wonderful city of Tashkent and how do we wait? So, we've discovered that Tashkent is quite a big city actually. Uh, it's big, you've got wide streets. So we figured the best way to start by looking at it is by going underground. And as you can see, it's uh, quite a tidy little setup here. We've got um, marble clad columns and beautiful uh, column tops and uh, here we've got mosaics on the wall and have a look at the mosaic and here comes the train Right, so that ride was uh, like riding a Sydney old Red Rattler. Very, very noisy. Gave the uh, impression that we were doing about 300 kilometres an hour, but I don't think it was. Uh, this was so noisy I can almost not hear. Um, about as narrow as a Brisbane train, as rattly as a Sydney old Rattler. And we just calculated the, the cost of the ride. We went five stations. 1700 Now I panicked when I realised that we just spent 1700 until I did the conversion and discovered that it's 20 cents. Now what is it you think I'm going to ask you, darling? I thought you were going to ask me where we are going today. Oh, that's, that's an idea. Where are we going today? We are going to Hazrati Imam Complex, which is the yeah. old mosque, um, where, um, which is considered as a main destination, tourist destination of Tashkent. So it's a, an old mosque we're headed to. Uh, yeah. I, I know very little about this place. I um, have to suppose read the signs. But it's on the tourist map, so we better go yes, to it. Is. Let's go and have a look. 
And we got a man here that has his statue. A proud, quite a large statue. Abdullah Qadiri. Born in 1894, died in 1938. As far as I can tell, he's some sort of an author. And here it is. One very, very big mosque. Yeah, on film. It may not uh, really explain the dimensions of this thing, but I would say it'd be at least 250 metres square. And uh, yeah, quite large. It must be the tourist thing because they're quickly trying to cover it all in scaffolding for me. But um, they must have realised that we we're here this week. They probably would have been ready to cover it all over with scaffolding next week. But uh, we've um, turned up a bit early for them. So we think this huge mosque that we've found is not what we we're looking for. The one we're looking for is what? Uh, ours is Hazrati Imam Complex, which I think is like it right over there. You can see it. Ah, so the one next door. Yeah. So it's like the it's like they've built one here, and then this guy's come along and going, "Well, I'm doing all right. Let's keep up with the Joneses. I reckon I could build a bigger one." And this is the one next door that we think is the one that we were looking for. So apparently, that's the tourist uh, spot. Must must see mosque so looks like we've seen it okay I can see a sign this one's the Jammy Mosque well, it might be Yammy Mosque J-A-M-I Mosque now we're in the vicinity of the old 2000 year old markets just to get, make it authentic, the locals are all getting around horses. So we found the circus. Not the sort of circus that we're used to, where the tents get pulled down. But the Soviets like permanent circuses. And there was one in Bishkek. And here is the Tashkent one. Still looks like it might be operating this one, the other one in Tashkent, in uh, Bishkek is definitely closed. And here we are in Chorosu Markets, and all, already we can see this is different to any of the markets we've been to in recent times. People talking to me in a language I have no idea what they're saying. Uh, so they can't haggle me into a bad deal, because I don't understand. So it works out good. Darling, what's the name of this, this uh, markets that we're at? That's Chorosu Market. Chorsu, yeah. Chorsu markets, and I believe it's very old. How old is it? Two thousand years old. Two thousand years old. Okay, so that would have been Silk Road material, well before any of the Muslim stuff coming in. And how big was it originally? Do you know? It was um, not very big. It was built to accommodate three thousand people at the time. Well, it seems a lot bigger than that now. Is it then, been upgraded? When the city became bigger, they extended the market to accommodate. 30,000 people and um, it was uh, becoming bigger and bigger every year. All right now I've just spotted some hats. You know I like hats. Do you think that'd suit me? No. No? Oh, okay. All right then. Um, well we'll just continue on until we find something that suits me. Well there's no shortage of Larry dresses. That's for sure. Oh boy. Look at stuff in that shop. All kinds of metal plates and Anyway, we only just started. Got to keep moving otherwise we'll not see everything. So it's uh, quite flash inside and uh, lots of bright clothes and uh, very ornate plates and um, brass tea sets. Pretty cool. Spice Girls would absolutely love it here. They'd be right in their element. 
Now we're going to the fruit and veggie section of our local Woolies. Lots of friendly shopkeepers just chopping at the bit to help you make a purchase. Found my favourite shop, Choco City. I could spend a lot of time in that shop, but my wife reckons I need to lose some weight, so maybe not this trip. Okay, I found the meat section. I recognise it's being parts of a dead animal. However, I couldn't tell you what that's a steak. She's buying herself a little steak. And uh, yeah, some bones for the dog. A big dome on top. <laughs> ah, I love the smell of unrefrigerated meat in the evening. Sounds like a good line for a movie. It's a pungent smell. And that's how you buy a chicken. Look at that for a steak, eh? Look at that for a steak. <laughs> Feed the man meat. Okay, we're here for two weeks. We had a lot of rain last week, so it's Saturday. We had a lot of rain last week. But besides that rain last week, I had some chicken from a market cooked. Beautifully cooked. Well, it's a great cook. But uh, it's the fourth time that I've uh, gone down with stomach issues in relation to eating chicken from markets. So yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about it. I think I might wait. I'm quite a while before I try it again. Well, I've got to say, I don't think I've really seen anything that would suggest it was uh, 2,000 years old. That's, um, yeah, doesn't, yeah, if there's nothing remaining of its old heritage, I'm not saying that it's new, it's old and tattered, but it's not 2,000 years old. It's the kind of old you don't like, the kind that is, needs to be fixed. But anyway. We'll move on to our next adventure. So this is not our station, but we had to get off because Elena thinks it's pretty. So we've got to stay here and take some photographs. There's that rattle that we went in on. And then we just had to do a ride on the newer train which is uh, far more comfortable. Lots of people use the subway. And this is what the pretty station looks like. And here we have a Soviet mosaic in Uzbekistan station. All the streets in Tashkent are like this. They're all hugely wide able to cope with a lot of traffic. Unlike uh, Kazakhstan and Almaty, haven't seen a single traffic jam yet. And uh, there's almost three million people, I think, live in this city. But all the roads are this wide. This is not a freeway, not a highway. Okay, now we found ourselves Alisha Navoy. He died in 1501. So, darling, what's this place we're walking past? I have no idea, honestly. You know, <laughs> no idea? Didn't you read the sign? Uh, You're a graduate. That's a, that's a university. It's the Webster University, named after the dictionary. Some really nice classical style buildings in this area. Chevy's the most common cars here by far. Probably it looks like about 80-90% of the vehicles on the road are Chevy's. So what we have here uh, with 
Turkestan, written on the top of it, is a theatre. Now we know it's a theatre because we just asked the security guy behind us. And behind him is what looks like magnificent parkland. But as every entrance is guarded, looks like it's guarded 24 hours a day, and we asked him what was behind there, and he said, don't know. So it's something I, I'm told, I'm not allowed to video it, so I'm not going to video it, and uh, we don't know what it is. It's a secret. So that park area that I was just talking about that is clearly closed off is roped off. One of the um, paramilitary men said that we couldn't even video over there. Uh, but we found another one that said we can go up this way. We can go up this, up this entrance. So we don't know what's happening as to why we can't go over there. But it's all roped off. And, um, well, this is pretty nice. So we're allowed to look at some of the park. But another part we're not allowed to go look at or video or anything. So I'm not sure what this is. I'll see if I can find something written in English to work out what it is. Okay, so I think I figured out what this is. It's got the names of a lot of people who are seem to have were born in different years, but all seem to pass away between 1941 and 1944. So I'm going to hazard a guess that this is a memorial. And uh, there are many, many books with names written in them. And I think I can confirm that it is a memorial. We've got the eternal flame going here. The statue. Unfortunately, I can't um, read the inscriptions. It looks like Mother Teresa, but uh, maybe somebody else that uh, is famous and well known to the people of Uzbekistan. Okay, so darling, um, it's written in two languages. One, I assume, is Uzbek, but then there's some inscriptions written in Russian. Could you tell me what you could read, what you could understand there? Sure. It says, um, eternal memory to those uh, compatriots uh, giving their lives for freedom and independence uh, and happiness of our nation and the country. So that's what it's written in here. And over there it says, uh, our loved ones are always in our hearts. Okay, so just good memorial words. There's no clue as to who the statue is. Mother. Motherland. Motherland, that's yeah. the motherland. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a gorgeous park. And it's up there in the distance there's a roped off area that we're not even last allowed to ask what it is. But, uh, Elaine is getting us getting down there next to the flame. Take some photographs. A little bit too close for my comfort. I can feel the heat from here. There's another section of that memorial with the with more names written on it, so the first part we looked at was only half of it. Got um, people here tending to the gardens, and uh, it's a little bit unusual. They're walking with buckets to that water truck, filling up the buckets, and they hand them over to the ladies here in the garden. We're pouring the buckets on to the flowers in order to water them. So no hose, no plumbing, everything's being done by hand. Well, we definitely found the plumbing. There's no shortage of it now. Right up and down the length of the park. Waterfalls, just like this. Beautiful. But we can only see half the park, because the other half park is definitely fenced off. Um, somebody there that they don't want us to know about. And we got Mama Duck and her ducklings living in the big fountain. I don't know where the next source of water would be for a duck to uh, live, but... Um, They've got a nice little environment set up for themselves here. So 
So in this area that's uh, restricted, you notice that a lot of the poles around the place feature the Uzbek flag and another flag that's got white, blue and red on it. it seems to be all around this restricted area. Okay darling, so this is a rather big statue here. We've got a very solid man with a solid woman behind him. And uh, you've done a little bit of research to find out what this monument's about. Can you tell me what it is? All in all, the brief history, uh, it's called the Monument of Carriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason it's, it's called its name is uh, after the earthquake back in 1966 when the city has been badly destroyed and as you can see on that clock it shows the time the, the time when the earthquake happened so the time was frozen yeah that's frozen and you see the crack that goes throughout that uh, whole stone that's a representation of uh, an earthquake when uh, all people around the city uh, joined together and in order to restore and rebuild their city and help each other. Oh, we've got a big crack in the earth here too. Now people watching may not be as fascinated as I am, but I'm reliably informed that that is a walnut on a walnut tree. So, yeah, we all eat them, but this is where they come from. Well, not, they don't all come from this one tree, but they come from a tree very much like this one somewhere else or maybe even this tree who knows here we got a uh, 60s soviet style olympic glory museum oh we uh, just came to the front door and the, and the lovely people actually came out to meet us and uh they asked us if we would like a guide and I asked how much would it be for a guide, English speaking guide and for the two of us it was 70,000 Uzbek Somis so that's $8.28 for a private guide and the two of us entry so we're going for it, we're having a splurge so we've got our English speaking guide but Elena wants to speak Russian to her uh, well the, our guide is asking if um, she can speak Russian so I can translate it to you well let's but, do it then but the deal was that uh, the I know. Guide was supposed to speak English and so okay well you can be our guide okay I will try to uh, explain about our museum welcome to our museum mm -hmm. uh, uh, our museum opened in 1968 um, after uh, earthquaking, if, if you know, uh, after in 1996, after uh, after big reconstruction, we opened again, and uh, our past reconstruction was in uh, 2023. Uh, and now you you may see our modern uh, museum. Okay, and it was made in Tokyo, uh, 2020. Uh, you may see uh, this uh, torch like sakura, flower sakura sakura in Tokyo. Uh -huh. You know this flower? Sakura sakura is a, a cherry blossom. Yeah. Uh huh. What else have we got? We've got Salt Lake City from 2002, <coughs> Torino 2006, not sure what that is. Um, 2016, Each, Rio, was that right? Each torch has own design and, uh, and each time a sportsman give to another sportsman like Estafeta. Yeah. Well, drew this panel for our museum especially. And here we are with the 1956 Olympics and up on the top left running with the torch is Ron Clark, the former mayor of the Gold Coast, our hometown. Very proud of their museum. Um, most of the time they were in the USSR so it's only since um, the 90s that they've been their own country 
representing themselves or being represented in the Olympics. But uh, this museum here is one of five around the world. Australia doesn't have one, and I don't understand why. And neither does the United States, which is also puzzling. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're very proud of their sporting achievements. A lot of the cups and things are here from Asian games and different sorts of games, but they're very proud of anything they achieve in Olympics. And boxing is one of their favourite sports. And our lovely little guide was just absolutely adorable. And... Um, She's very excited to be on our YouTube channel when uh, it comes out. And now we're seeking some water. We found this lovely little path with a sign that says the Olympic Cafe. So we're hoping we can find something to drink right down this little garden path. A beautiful little cafe. So we're definitely going to spend a little time here and uh, have some, partake in some refreshments. Sit down here and relax. We are looking at the palace of Nicholas Konstantinov and we can't go in. All the gates are locked. There are two women sitting in there having a conversation. We can, I can see them. But this is as close as we can get as tourists. There's some uh, couple of dog statues up on the front of the entry and a couple of uh, big stags either side of the front staircase the fountain it's not operating I could see inside enough to just know that it looks like it's been it's been gutted so they must be planning to completely renew it um, but I don't doesn't there's no signs of work going on although the lawns have been mowed um, we've got a sign here telling us that this tree here oriental tree was planted in 1883 that tree right there so, uh, I'm not sure exactly the history of this place but we're thinking it's to do with the former royal family of Russia yes and the Grand Duke was indeed related to the Tsar of Russia. He was exiled here. Don't know the story of it. The left wing was his area and the right wing was that of his wife. So I guess that would um, make a happy family situation. He could uh, eat pizza and leave the boxes on the floor and she'd have to just put up with it, just go to her side. Elena just went and asked the two women that were inside if, as they came out of the front gate if we could go in and uh, not surprising I said no closed is closed so that oak tree in front of us right there that was planted in 1876 and it's very tall and that is how tall an oak tree grows if you planned it in 1876 and you're here in 18, well, what do we know? Not 18, 2024. But the big fat one beside it, that was planted in 1883. So that was uh, a little bit behind. Okay, we're in a square now, right opposite the palace, which is probably, I'm guessing, part of the grounds of the palace at some point. We've got a statue here and this gentleman's name is? Sharov Rashidov. Sharov Rashidov. 
of Sharov is a surname. Oh, sorry, Sharov is the name. Rashidov is a surname. And we don't know who he is, but that's who he is. He's got two stars on his chest, two medals from the Soviet Union. Look at a big Soviet building there. You can tell by the design of it. And no, that's not the ocean. It's actually one of the largest ponds I've ever seen. And uh, some interesting waterfall style fountains. We are in Independence Square. Now, there's a building in the background there. We can't get to it. I can see that it's cordoned off, fenced off. So it's just one of those places that we can't go to. So there's a lot of restrictions going on at the moment. I honestly, some of my background, this is a big statement. I've seen so many police lo loitering around doing nothing in my life. And what we found here on the map is the city centre. So we've got a mall street that's been uh, cut off and all kinds of street vendors it's uh, past seven o'clock at night now and people look like they're starting to mill around this kind of reminds me of uh, Orchid Avenue on the Gold Coast hey, and the streets wider Put the same sort of shops around Um, don't think there'll be any nightclubs, of course. But lots of places to find something to eat. And lots of places to spend your money on clothes. And that's the Hotel Uzbekistan. And to the right... is the building that I can't pronounce. We're going to look at it and I'll get a lane to pronounce it. I really don't have a clue what this building is, but judging by all the scaffolding is, this is probably the biggest tourist attraction the city has. Of course, with my track record, if it's a tourist attraction, it's got scaffolding around it. You get close up, you can't see the dome on the top of it, but this is a mighty impressive building. I uh, can't catch Elena to get her to pronounce it for me but because she just keeps on keeping on. Darling, what's the name of this building? I don't know. Well you keep telling me the name of the square that we're going to. Amir Timur. Amir Timur. Yes. Right, that's what the building is. Okay. Amir Timur. And this, I would say, is the Amir Timu Square. We've got a very large gentleman on a horse, sitting right in the middle. We might go and see if we can't get an interview. Okay, so we've just learned that Amir Timu is a man on a horse. It's a very large man on a horse, with a crown on his head. And there's his name there, Amir Timu. Strength in Justice. Help us grow, like, share and subscribe. So we've uh, we've walked a few kilometres today. And you seem to enjoy that. And we've walked around and had a look at most of the things in the city. Uh, I'm quite impressed with it. It's lots of uh, wide streets, lots of amazing architecture and uh, lots of beautiful green public spaces. So what, what are your thoughts on Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Pretty much the same. I'm very impressed with the uh, beauty of the city, how the streets are wide and multi lined. Uh, the city is green, lots of trees, and uh, it's generally very, very pretty. Yeah, well, I think we both recommend visiting. However, um, if you just speak English and you've got no access to Russian, uh, it might be a bit of a struggle because. Um, these countries that are behind the Iron Curtain 
uh, English is as foreign to them as Chinese is to us. So, uh, luckily, I got a pretty good Russian speaker, and um, but you found it a bit frustrating at times, haven't you? Uh, yes. Well, one very important point: keep lots of change, because uh, if you hand out a big note. Uh, you may not get the change back. No. No. They will find that. You know, a lot of people would find a lot of reasons not to give you a change. And when you do get your change, make sure you count it. <laughs> right. But other than that, you, you do. there are some really lovely people, but uh, when it comes to um, money matters, just be on your guard. But having said that, it's pretty cheap here. It is cheap, you know. Go in the museum, um, the trains, I think the because our dollar dropped overnight, so it cost us 21 cents today on the train, um, which, you know, sort of sport the budget. But, um, yeah, good value. Good value, and it's a beautiful place to come and see. It is a good place to see. But it's just that language thing. You, it's a, It'd be a real struggle trying to get around if uh, you don't have some Russian or Uzbek or, or something else. But, but um, anyway, as I say, I've been lucky. And we've thoroughly enjoyed it, haven't we? We have. So we'll be off to our next adventure soon. Still in Uzbekistan, but a different city altogether. <laughs>